All right. <clears throat> hey guys, next two here. It's been so long since I've done the next two intro. Wow. Uh, anyways, there's no title card for this game. It just starts off exactly the way you'd expect it to. Uh, we are playing a game called Click to Ten. And um, I will start. Oh, I don't need to actually because there's a timer thing right there. Um, we're going to be playing this game, Click to Ten. Uh, all I know from the very limited thing on Steam, I can actually, uh, check it right now. Hold up. New from Steam. Steam. In my Steam library, this game is listed as Click to Ten. And, uh, we go to the store page for it. Um... It says click to ten is an interactive clicking game where you click it and get it uh, click it and you get it up to go there. To go up there. I don't know why three hentai games are more like this. One of my friends wants this game. And people say it's very positive. So yeah. We're uh we're playing that right now. I don't wanna click to ruin it, but you just gotta click it to go to ten. And um once you have achieved the clicking to 10, you would have beaten the game. So that's pretty much how it goes. Um, but yeah, click to 10. I saw it yesterday, uh, like middle of the night when I was talking to my friend, I was just like, hey, wait, uh, let me look at the free Steam games on Steam. And then this popped up and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> free game, that's awesome. And basically that's all that was. Well, yeah, it's just a casual Friday, you know, it's nothing really going on, nothing insane happening, to be honest. I could just, just it's only, what, 4 o'clock in the afternoon for me, as of right now recording this. So, this would probably, I imagine this video would be up by, like, maybe 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock. But, um, I don't know, I'm not a future man, I can't predict when this would be exactly uploaded. Even though I'm me, and I'm the one who's going to make it uploaded after I edit it. But editing's going to take a long time, because, like, I have a lot planned for this video. There's going to be a lot that I do in it. There's going to be a lot that I say in it. There's going to be a lot of things shown in it. And, like, I just, I need, you know, I need to be able to, um, freaking like, edit it all. And I need a lot of time for that, so... It won't take a lot of time. It'll maybe take like an hour or two of editing. Maybe three hours of editing. Maybe even four hours of editing, actually. But when I really think about it, I'm going to have to eat after like two hours. So maybe like five hours of editing. But once I eat, I usually like get really sleepy. So I lay down. So then I like get maybe seven hours after editing. But then again, after I get sleepy and lay down and all that, I kind of like want to nap. And I wouldn't nap. But if I'm eating at like two o'clock in the afternoon then I might not because there's nothing better to do and usually everyone's away at the moment. So then maybe it's at seven hours, it turns into nine hours. But maybe after like I wake up nine hours later, I'll start editing, which means it'll take like ten hours. I won't close the editor while this goes on. But then if my mom interrupts me after ten hours and says I have to go to the store or something, then that might turn into like thirteen hours. But um it's fine though, I'll still get it uploaded you know, today, this afternoon, like seven. 13 hours is not that bad once you, like, cut it down and, like, really start to get on it, you know? That's how I do it, at least. I just, like, I really start to get it down packed. And once I get it down packed enough, um, it should always work out. Because that's just how things normally work out for me. You sh crack down on it, and then it just wins, and you win, and it's just, you're always good. That's how I live, that's how I rule, that's how life works that's how everyone should live that's how everyone should rule it's crazy so let's get political you guys heard about that chris brown stuff anyways that's enough politics for now um we gotta really talk about something important now this game it's been making me think a lot about video games lately you know like video games in general and just you know all games because click to 10 is a free to play game right it's free you can just download it. it doesn't require much i think it was like 60 megabytes it's not like some 60 gigabyte game like freaking call of duty or modern warfare or something you know like it's not like you're downloading skyrim on your pc 
or anything. I think Elden Ring also takes a lot. Like, it's nothing crazy. It's just 60 megabytes. You can do it in a second. You can do it on a laptop. Hell, you could probably even do it on the phone if it lets you. Uh, I hope this game gets a mobile port and a Switch port because I want to play it on the go, you know? I want to be able to do this while I'm doing other things in life. And sometimes I can't just be sitting down on the computer all day during life. So I need other things to do. And with a game like that, it would be very easy for me to just go on the go. I'm in the car. Click the 10. I'm in a bus, click to 10. I'm in an airport, click to 10. I'm in the middle of a battle between two neighboring countries in uh, need of food that only one country can provide, but both need. I can play click to 10. I, I, I'm, I'm a vegetarian, so you know I can't fight. But um, there's a lot of things I could be doing where I could just click to 10. And with other games, I can't play Valorant in a bus. Are you kidding me? Where am I going to rage? What am I going to punch? I can't do that. I can't play freaking Fallout 5 when it comes out next year in a tent in the middle of the woods. How am I going to save? I can't play Borderlands 1 when I'm freaking just... Yeah. So, like, it won't work. But one click to ten. I could do that anywhere. I could do that easily. I could do that funly. I could do that amazingly. I could do that outstandingly. I could do that expertly. Anywhere. And I'd like to say, since, like, you know, this game's pretty low-key. Like, only the OG OGs know about this game. Only, like, the real video game veterans know about this game. Because of that, I'd like to assume that um, only us amazingly godlike people know how to speedrun it. I can speedrun this game so fast. Faster than anyone could even imagine. But, you know, no one even knows of the game's existence, so that's why I'm making a video on it. And it's not just a regular video, I gotta make like a video video on it, you know? And just really give everyone the memo of what this game is about. Because honestly, I don't think anyone knows what this game is about. Now I'm gonna get up real quick and get a drink of water. So, uh, hope you don't mind. Onto some of the just graphical aspects of Click to Ten. You see, there's no start screen because a lot of games like to do a start screen and have some kind of shitty music in the background or something. You know, something to implore you to wanting to like go forth with playing the game you just agreed to play. Because let me move my mic. Wanting to play the game is a whole other thing. But actually sitting down and actually investing your time and energy and thought and everything into playing it. Now that, that's a whole other story. You see, I love that there's no game loading screen. There's no loading screens. There's no intro cutscene. There's no voice acting. There's no subtitles. There's no settings. I don't need to look at any of that. The game knows exactly what I need without me saying anything. And habits like that is how I know I'm playing a good game. So when you load up games like freaking like, I don't even know, Minecraft, and they bombard you with news updates and bug fixes and starting music and loading screens. Like, I've been playing the same game all my life. Why do I gotta load into it again? I should just be able to click it and immediately start mining. I don't even have to load it up. No, I just click it and I start mining. This game, I don't have to deal with all that. I can just click it anywhere, anywhere I go, as long as I'm able to play it, and boom. When I get my Steam Deck in a few months, I'll be able to play this game on it, hopefully. And if they didn't Steam Deck certify this game, I'm going to send a personal complaint to Steam asking why, or Valve asking why I don't have the ability to play one of my favorite games on my new console that I paid because I support Valve and Steam and I love all of the things they do. And... This is, that would be disrespectful to me. But I know them. I know them very well. I know them very personally. And they, I just, all I have to do is shoot them a message. And they'll be like, hey man, here's your game. And it'll come right to my door. And they'll give me a physical copy of Click to 10. Physical. So, I don't have to worry about that. But, just, the you see how frustrated I got just at the thought of them not doing it. That would have just utterly destroyed me if they just didn't put my favorite video game on here but clearly clearly they knew me better than that so it's fine 
looking outside right now. So beautiful outside. Uh, let me check the weather. How hot or cold is it outside today? Because I know that varies. It's a perfect 50 degrees Fahrenheit today. And for my fans out there that don't use Fahrenheit, it is 10 degrees Celsius out there today. And for people that use Kelvin, well, fuck you. It's like 7,000. I don't know what the fuck Kelvin is. But um, it's beautiful outside. The sun's shining on my legs right now as I record this. It's kind of getting on my desk, too. My desk is warm. Mm, that's a nice feeling. There's leaves outside. There's trees. The grass is all nice and green. There's some squirrels scattering about, enjoying their lives. I wonder, do squirrels lay down? Like, how people lay down and bathe in the sun. Do you think squirrels bathe in the sun since they're out most of the day? I know bunnies do. That's why they sometimes just lay still in the lawn. Like, sometimes they do it to be on alert. And sometimes when there's actually no danger present, they just like to bathe. There's a lot of animals that apparently like to bathe in the sun that I never knew about because they don't have heaters or AC or anything. So the only way they can heat up or cool down is by doing some natural stuff. Some animals, when they want to cool down, they lay in water or they lay on something cold. Some animals, when they want to get hot, they stay in the sun or they touch hot things and stay near them. Not every time it is that things bother everyone. It's just very interesting to think that not all animals also follow the same logic when it comes to, like, heat. Alright. I think after this much time, you guys are probably getting frustrated and like, come on, man, when is he gonna click it? So, just for you, we are now at one. It's a big step for me. Honestly, it's a huge step for me to do this. To go this far for you. Normally, it takes a lot more build-up for me before I can go to one. But just for today, just right now... I'm going to one for you, all right? But don't get picky. Don't get greedy. Don't get petty. Don't do the, don't do those. Because I didn't have to give you this one. And I never said I can't give you a two. So don't shoot the Messiah before he finishes his tale. Something my great-grandfather always told me. Nicholas, don't shoot the Messiah before he tells his tale. Oh, Nicholas. Oh. Oh, Muriel. Those are his last words. Do you want to know what happened to him after that? Do you want to know what happened to him after he said those very words? He had to go, get up, walk out the room, go downstairs, put on a jacket, go in the kitchen, grab a bagel. Take one bite of it because he couldn't take the bagel with him because it wouldn't fit in his car. And here he has his car messy enough. And his wife has been bothering him for months now to clean it. And he keeps saying he will, but he keeps forgetting. He genuinely would, but he's a little lazy to. And he really just needs a little push. But he knows he can, so he doesn't want anyone to push him. But he just keeps forgetting to do it. But after he didn't bring it, he went in the fridge, went to grab a water bottle, couldn't find any. So he had to settle with a vitamin water. And that vitamin water was the, well, almost a blue, was the pink one. And he really likes the yellow ones more than pink one. Because the yellow ones, just, the citrus taste is so good. And there's nothing wrong with the pink one. It's just, it's not what he needs right now. It's early in the morning. The yellow ones give energy. That's what he needs to get going, you know. That energy boost really starts to help. But you can't drink it too much or alone. Because it will give you heartburn. It does for me. And I will for you. Because I am you. Anyways... He grabbed the vitamin water, popped it open, took a nice little refreshing sip of that cold, delicious beverage. And he was like, ah, all right, it's time to go to work. Well, I mean, he more said like, <laughs> so yeah, he got ready for work. And um, yeah, he went to work. That's what happened after he told me that. Unfortunately, as good as that message was, I wasn't in my bed, nor was I home. So he said it to a wall. But that's unimportant. The point is, you will get that too someday. You just have to earn it. Because right now, I don't know. I'm feeling a little iffy about even giving that one now. I'm feeling a little, feeling a little tight. The sun's not even shining on me anymore. What happened to the sun? It was just shining a second ago. Why did it stop? That's why I'm starting to get a little upset because things things don't always go the way you want them to 
and when they don't, then you start to get a little upset and confused and just you start to play the blame game. And no one likes the blame game. You try to say you're right and then someone else tries to say you're not right and you have a really good claim as to why you're right and you keep trying to express that without being violent or anything but just no matter what it seems you say the other person just always somehow has a way to make you sound wrong and it's just it sucks you're not trying to fight or argue but you are because no one's just understanding what you're saying and it's like you are trying to find articulated calm ways to bring about this and just no matter what it seems you say or do they just never seem to understand that you are correct and they're always going to be wrong and there's nothing they can say to change that and there's nothing wrong with thinking that way it's perfectly fine to think you're right you are right and you know it and everyone else is inferior and you are the best so like why is it that this is not being understood i genuinely don't get it but you know what Whenever I get in these situations, I simply just do the following. Scream, yell, cry, insult, offend, cry, and then, um, what's it called? Batter's assault with a vehicle. And that's the exact steps I take, and I've never lost an argument ever again. Ever again. Now you may be sitting here like, wow. This is really, like, Nick is really saying all these things, and, like, is he being serious? Is Like, this is really good advice, Nick. And I know. Anyways, it's now 5 o'clock, my time. Why am I giving you such updates on what time it is when this was recorded? Because just knowing exactly when things happen really gives you perspective on just who the person is that's doing it, what's up in their life. What's going on? Where were you during this time? What was going on in your life while this happened, you know? It's just insane to think that someone else could be doing something while you're doing something. And it's just completely opposite. Like right now. Oh, perfect example. I'm looking out my window right now. There's a family of three people and a dog. I'm in here talking to you guys about one of the best video games on Earth. While these three people, a dad and two little brothers are busy spending time with their dog on a windy day. What's wrong with them? Why would they be doing that? This game is so much more important than that. And yet, they choose not to. They choose to focus on bonding, and having fun, and doing things with their family, and experiencing new things with their dog. But you could be experiencing new things in count to ten. You just gotta count one to ten. And that's a very grueling task, I gotta admit. That task is a lot harder than you can physically imagine. But they would never know. They would never know. Ever. And that is the difference between someone as sophisticatedly advanced as me and something as primitively dumb as them. But no, dumb is not a good word to use. We do not call the opposite race of intelligence dumb. We call them inferior. Because it's not that they can be good, it's that they simply never could be good. And you don't get mad at someone that could never be good. You get mad at someone that can be good, but is not doing the right steps to achieve it. So clearly, what I'm trying to say is people that choose not to play count to ten are just incoherently unadvanced and incapable of being good. But people that play count to ten are already so highly advanced and sophisticated, there is no point in attempting to sway the opposite side. They simply should just look back and be very happy with what they currently are possessing in knowledge and life. So clearly, there's no need to bicker and belittle the opposing side, when obviously I know I am right. And that's the motto you really should take away from this. I am right. And as someone who is right, you, listening, should simply play count to 10. Uninstall all your video games that you own currently. Install count to 10, free on Steam. Because why make such a beautiful gift a price, right? That's why this game is so good. Why make such a beautiful gift cost something? You know what? 
I'm getting so happy about this. We're at two now. Isn't that insane? We're at two. Who would have thought? Me and you getting the two together. That's madness. I really didn't think we'd get the two. Madness, bro. Just, just madness. I honestly don't know what to say. I honestly don't know what to say. Just managing to be here. Alive. Healthy. Human. Not part Barracuda. Just human and me. I have a four letter name. It can go to eight letters if I wanted to. But I don't choose to do that often. Unless for funniness. And even then, no one even spells it like that. They usually miss letters on purpose. You know how lucky I am to have a four-letter name and not a five-letter name? Because there's some big theories on four to five-letter names, and I'm here to clear it up. Five-letter names aren't that great. Because you know how many five-letter names are in the world that are overused and overtaken compared to four-letter names? Think about it. Will? That's not a name that's very common in our generation anymore, is it? And I say our, meaning mine. And if you don't know my generation or what age I am, then clearly you're just not a part of it. But we're all the same age. Me and every single person watching this video. We're all the exact same age. And you can try to dispute it. You can try to say, no, I'm this age. Or no, you're that age. We're all the same age because the internet, life, God, Satan, me, we all know exactly who's who and we know how to bring them all together. So I know the age demographic of my viewers and they're all exactly the same age. They're all from the exact same place and no, they're not the same person, but they know each other and they all watch me. And that's just simply that. Now I see the families heading back after realizing all this family bonding is getting them nowhere and when they could be playing count to ten they could be learning so much more and doing so much more in life than just standing there with their dog and laughing and running around aimlessly at nothing their dog's not going to retain any of this it's going to say wow my owners waste their time interacting with me all day when they should be interacting with such a beautifully crafted and excellently created game known as count to 10 because honestly that's what this always goes back to count to 10 it's just such a good game it's just such an amazing experience it's just such a perfect example of what video games need to aspire to be i was under the belief that video games peaked in the late 2000s like er not even late early early like almost pretty much beginning of 2000s when we were slowly divvying out of that 2d art style and slowly started an experiment with 3d art i thought that was the peak of games right there games that were 3d but still not entirely so it's basically 2d like the earthbound series is a great example it's 3d but it's still 2d but it's also still 3d and games like that i thought that was a peak of video games but then we come into this where everything's all realistic and the games look violent and everything looks just like real life and the guy's finger coming towards the screen looks just like my finger. And it's hard to tell which is real and which is fake. And some game cutscenes look like real life movies. And I have to be told that it's a video game. It's insane. But then again, we thought the same thing when we saw the Atari. And it's just a square hitting another square to move and hit the other square. And people are like, wow, I know exactly what this one square on the screen is. I know exactly what it is, I know exactly what it's shooting, I know exactly what it's hitting, and I can see the whole world differently because of that. And that's how I feel with this game. I see the thing on the screen, I know what it does, I know how I affect it, I know what it's going to happen, and just my whole entire life is changed by that. It's insane. It's insane. This game doesn't have a logo. I mean, it does when you open it, but beyond that, the game file doesn't have a logo. Let's see what the EXE is called. Click to 10. So beautiful. So beautiful. Honestly, 
I, I, I just, I could keep going. I could just keep going. Because this game just is so much. So much. While being so, not basic, but simplified. It's what you need in a video game. Not even what you want. It's what you need out of it. Because people don't just play video games because they want to. There's always a reason why they have to do it. And this gives you exactly what it is. When you play a video game, the point, most points are, you're supposed to do a thing and complete it, right? Even if it's a game without an ending, there is something you are doing, and there is something you can do to be finished. And being finished doesn't mean necessarily forever, but at the moment. People play first-person shooter online games because they want to win. And when they win... They have completed that goal. And some people think, well, because I've completed my goal so soon, instead of how long I thought it would take, maybe I should do another try. Or maybe I should expand my reach and try and get two wins. Or maybe three. Or maybe five. Or maybe 12 a day. Or maybe only win for a whole day. Things like that. They try to do. And those are good goals. Other games, simply, you play it, and you finish it, and that is it. That is what you aimed for, that is what you gained, that is what you win. You have done the impossible and made it possible. You've gotten your win, you've gotten your completion. So now, this game does that, but better. It gets rid of all of the grueling hardships of grinding, playing through, paying attention, remembering, enjoyment, hatred, happiness, sadness. They remove all of that, completely scrape all of it into a garbage can and throw it out the window. And they just say, here is what you want, here is what you need, right there in front of you, have a nice day. And honestly, I can't, I can't even begin to express how well they did this. Click to 10. I, I'm going to open up the Steam thing one more time. Click to 10. Click to 10 is an interactive clicking game where you click it and you get it to go up there. Oh, <gasps> it gave it a three without me even giving consent. Without me even giving approval, without me even giving indication that I was going to click it. And it just said, no, Nick, for appreciating the game so much, we're going to give you a three right now. This is the game devs talking to me saying, we are going to give you an individual who deserves nothing from us, who doesn't at all deserve to have this amazingness bestowed upon you. But we're just... We're going to give it to you anyways, just because we really just appreciate you. Because we really honestly honor you. We value you. We trust you. And honestly, it's making me tear up because I really didn't think I was going to get to three today. I thought two was the best I could ever do. But this is a new record right now. Getting the three. I can't express how insane it is that I got to three. Because I've shown thousands, I've watched thousands of breakdown videos, I've watched Let's Plays, stream highlights, I've went to a live event, a competitive tournament, and yet, I come home, I'm like, alright, we've got this. I load up the game, and I'm just bewildered beyond my beliefs. Clicking to three. How? Have I done it? How have I made it possible? How have I made it so far? And genuinely, to this day, I can't answer that. Because I'm still too young. We're always too young for something. Even if you're 70 years old, going on to 77 after one year, you're still never going to know everything, there will still be something that can elude you. 
I'm going to open Twitter for a second here. And I'm going to look at some things on my Twitter feed. And just looking at these things and then going back to this beautiful game, I'll be able to enlighten you on how much of an influence this game has on me. Let's see, what's my most recent thing? It is my friend talking about music. Then I go down and it's a YouTuber talking about their YouTube channel. I'm gonna go down one more time. And it is the same YouTuber talking about beginning NFTs. And then it's a person talking about how they lost their job. Then it is a game company and news feed company talking about recent events that took place at a, at a live event. Then a watch. Then we have a popular rhythm game talking about a new mod coming for it. Then one of the most popular games out right now. And just appreciation for it. And then we have an upcoming movie. And an advertisement for it. And then another YouTuber I don't even know of yet. Rebranding their content. So as you can see from all of those things. It seems like, you know, just what does this have to do with anything, Nick? And here, uh, why are, else wouldn't you be watching this video? I am here to explain perfectly what all of this has to do with Click to 10 because it does have something to do. And I am very ready to begin explaining it. But I can't explain it just yet. I can't just give you the answers because what do you learn when all you get is answers and have no questions yourself? You know? If you want the answer to that, to that question, I am not going to just give it to you. You must ask it first. You must enlighten me first on what it is you want to know. What is the most dearest thing you need to know in life? I can answer it. I can answer anything at all. But you have to ask it. And you have the amazing ability to do that because YouTube knew this would happen. YouTube knew there were questions out there that people needed to know and only one could answer. And they created the beauty known as a comment section. And you can use that comment section to ask me any question you need answered in this video. And I will answer it on this video. So if you really do need to know what it is that those things in my Twitter feed have to do with this game, just ask below and I can answer it. I'm always going to be able to answer it and I'm here for you and I surely will answer it. Now, it's been quite some time now since I pressed the button and I don't know if I really can get to four today. This might be too much stress on me for it, but just know that we managed to get to three today. This is a beautiful day. This is a day of enlightenment. It's a day of learning. It's a day of changing as a person. Because I got to three on a game I didn't think was physically possible to allow such grace to me. I feel completely at ease in my life. I feel completely at bliss. I feel accomplished. I feel amazing. I feel like I can take on anything right now. I feel like anything anyone has ever complained about in their entire life, I can walk in and just erase all problems and just immediately give them happiness, no matter what, because I got to three. And if a video game can't give you that type of determination, then maybe people were right. Video games maybe are too violent now. Maybe video games are too bad for you and they're destroying the society we live in. Because all video games should give you this type of feeling when you play them. They should be more than just dopamine and happiness and rage and anger and friendship ruining and friendship creating. Because who cares about starting or losing friendships over games? It should just be about being happy and using your happiness 
for good reasons. And no one can argue that this game does it better than anything else out there. No heartfelt stories, no sorry full enlightenment tales that all try to portray the message you should value what you have and you should treat everyone amazingly because you never know when you'll be able to not do it again. That stuff sucks. It's boring, it's repetitive, I've seen it before, I could just do it myself. But this you can't do yourself. You cannot count to 10 by yourself. You cannot play count to 10 by yourself without this game being in existence first. This game has truly taught me so many things in life. Things that no boyfriend or girlfriend, husband or wife, kid or relative, friend, neighbor, enemy could ever teach you. Nobody on this earth could teach you it. Which is why the game wasn't from this earth. It was from beyond it. It was not from this planet. And that's a theory I've discovered. It's not even a theory. It's a fact. It's true. It's real. And I know it. And only I know it. And if there's anyone out there talking about this game, they will never be in as in-depth as I am when it comes to this. Ever. Because I know. I know the truth. This game comes from space. Where exactly? Planet Zelnith 54 8B of the Zargonoid sector. Zenith of Zargnoid. It comes from a ship known as Star Slice 334. <laughs> 7b and this game was created on it in a facilitation pod and shot down into valve hq and when the pod opened it blew up everything in a 600 mile radius and vaporized it off the face of the earth and once that happened steam had an update and this game was put in that update and valve agreed to it and greenlit it and it was put on steam and it was tested and everyone who tested it cried tears of absolute bliss and joy and that was that now i'm taking a nice look at my cpu usage from this game this game is currently using 87 percent of my cpu because 87 percent of my pc right now is trying so hard to make sure that this beautiful game does not lose even a single shining sparkle of its amazing quality. No one else but me knows how amazing it is to look at this number three right here. Nobody but me knows how amazing it is to look at this number three right here. Only I do. Only I do. I alone get the special privilege to see this on my screen. And honestly, it's quite exhilarating. Think about it. Is anyone else on this world currently looking at this screen like me? And if they are, are they on number three like I am? Probably not. It's just fascinating. It's just fascinating. Some people probably see this video and say, oh, it's a one hour video of him just playing a game. It's probably edited and it's just gonna be quiet the whole time. No, no it's not. If you skim through this whole video, every second, every millisecond, every minute is spent intensely just, Painting the amazing picture that is click to 10 and just enlightening you on how beautiful this game could be and why you really should just own it.
And just while I'm making this video, I'm pondering in my mind right now. Should I click? And I did. We are at four, guys. Holy shit, we're at four, bro. I'm so happy we got the four. Oh my god, we got the four. Wow. We got the four, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> we got the four. You see, this game knows you on a personal level. More than just an emotional or scientific level. Or just a gamer level. It knows you emotionally. Why would this game choose right now to allow me to go to four? This far in to playing it. This late in the day. This very moment. Why now can I go to four? Why couldn't I go before this? And there's a very, very, very easy answer. There's an easy answer and then there's a hard answer. The easy answer is, it knew. It knew I needed it. The hard answer is, maybe it knew I needed it, but why would it know I needed it and how? And then you start to think, well, what do we really know about this game? It gave us everything we wanted, but it didn't give us anything to not want or to think about. It didn't give us any time to ponder what we have or question it. It just gave us exactly what we looked for, and we took it. And when I think about that, it makes me wonder even more. How does it know exactly what I want? Is it sure it's going to get it right every time? What if it makes a mistake? Can it make a mistake? Is this game capable of not succeeding? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what would happen if someone were to play this game and not beat it. Now I've told you many times that I've failed, but I never stopped playing the game. I just couldn't get to three. So I would restart because it's not quitting if you restart. And the only way to say you quit is to stop for a significant amount of time. But if the game is always open, you never quit. You're just retrying and taking a long time to start. But what if you just said, I can't do it, and you quit? But when you look at my screen, there's no way to quit. We're in this for real. There's no exit screen, there's no anything, and if I dare try to click one, it may turn into a five. And that, my friend, is terrifying. To think that you would go out of your way to take something that is not yours, to steal something that does not belong to you, and claim it as your own. Now, we've not divvy from the main point. The main point is, can we trust this game now? Because where does it come from? Who decides what? And that leads back to my theory that I mentioned previously. It's not from here. It was not made from here. And the people that run it aren't of Earth. Clearly, it's out of our hands how this game works. Clearly, it's out of our hands why this game works so well and efficiently and how it's so accurately perfect at doing what it does. It's not in our control to decide how this game just operates. This game is of a higher plane than us. How high, you may be asking? I'd say like six feet, but we don't know. It's truly just beyond human. The more I stare at this four, I start to lose myself. I start to forget myself. I start to think things that I don't think. I start to feel things that I'm not feeling. I start to see things I'm not seeing. And in all this, I start to hear something. But I am hearing it. And it is real. 
So are my other senses fake? Or is this one sense just the only real one? And when I listen to it, you know what it says? I guess you don't want to listen. The sun has come back. The sun has greeted me once more. But will it stay? It seems fading, it seems fleeting, and it seems weak. But you know what isn't weak? What isn't fleeting? What stays forever? This game. It'll never go anywhere. It'll never leave you. It'll never lie to you. It'll never do anything but what it agreed upon from the very beginning. It'll never change its mind about things. It'll never overthink things. It'll never anything. It stays true to you from the start to the finish. Click to 10. Read it one more time before I never bring up the beautiful words again. Click to 10 is an interactive clicking game where you click it and get it to go up there. Such a beautiful game. Such a beautiful game. How? How? How can a game be so perfect, but yet it feels like I'm the only one who truly understands it? It feels like I'm the only one who truly knows how perfect this game is. It feels like out of everyone on this planet, it's me. Right here, me. Who knows this game's potential. You know how many good things this game can do for the world? It's just more people knew about it. The video game industry wasn't so destroyed from all of the abuse it suffered throughout the years. And this world has suffered throughout the years. So many people are so heartbroken and damaged. They don't want to try this anymore. They don't want to give anything else a chance. But if they gave this game a chance. It would change everything. Everything would change. It would be the life solver. The miracle. But, as with all things, people do not learn. And that's why I, the enlightened, and them, the unimagined, will always be different. Now, the sun keeps growing and shrinking. And someday, if you weren't aware, the sun's going to move on to better things. And it's going to leave us and go find someone else more important. And with that known, we have to be ready for it. We have to have more important things than a sun. All it does is sit up there. What does it do? We don't need it. It doesn't help us in any way. It just sits up there. Now this game, all of this game, it does so much for us. It gives so much to us. And it doesn't ask for anything in return. But the sun treats it like it doesn't need us and it can go on without us. We didn't do anything to deserve it. It's very true we didn't. But why does it have to abandon us because of that? Why does it have to leave us because of that? There's no reason for it. That's why this game is better than the sun. It's better than the sun. So much better than the sun, actually. I could live without the sun, but I can't live without this. This four on my screen. This four on the screen, it means so much to me. It's helped me. It's taught me. It's 
taken so much just to understand it. Because honestly, it's not something you can just grasp. And now we're at five. Do you know what five is? Do you know what five, the number, four greater than one, three less than eight, one more than four, is? 12 less than 3. 5. It is half of 10. We are playing a game called Click to 10. And we have clicked to 5. 5. Now if any of you paid attention to the deep lore of this game. I've warned you what happens if you cannot complete this game. This game is truly just awesome. Like, I'm having so much fun playing it. I'm genuinely smiling. I feel amazing. Nobody's interrupted me. Nobody's questioned me. Nobody's weird and concerned about it. Everyone's just like, Nick is having fun. And I am having so much fun. This game is so amazing. Honestly, I don't even know what to compare this game to, honestly. Like, there's no other games out there that I could truly compare this to. Nothing comes to this level of entertainment. Nothing comes to this level of godsend. It's just perfect. We can look at ourselves, we can look at society, we can look at the world, the friends we have, the people we've gotten to know. And do they truly mark up to the greatness that this game gives? Because this really has me thinking about my friends and family now. They give so much to me. They do so much for me. They're always there for me. They're so supportive. And I've gotten so far in life with them. But this game, and this short amount of time I've gotten to know it, has done more than that somehow. And that's amazing in its own, that a game was capable of doing such a thing. But then that leaves you thinking. What are my friends doing? What are my family doing then? If something's capable of achieving this much in this little time, then why haven't they? Why haven't they? It's just, it's confusing. I'm, I'm, I'm unsure what to feel. I'm unsure what to think. I'm not sure who I am anymore, who they are anymore. And as I sit, in a ball shape in my chair and ponder such intensive straining questions all i have staring back at me is this wonderful video game this wonderful beautiful game i take a moment to look around my room posters everywhere Things hanging on the wall everywhere. There's a sword from a video game on my wall. There's posters from various animes and shows and games on my wall. There's a poster of my own channel on my wall. There's a poster of a Disney character. There's pictures of me and my friends, me and my family on my wall. There's an amazing picture here too though. And this picture stands out from all the others. There's a picture of three monkeys, toy monkeys to be specific, linking arms together, and it says, and I quote, <clears throat> descending with delight. And if you're wondering what that could mean, just really take a moment, just write it down. Get a piece of paper, not your phone, not an iPad. Piece of paper, get a red Sharpie marker, and write down descending with delight on it. And just take a moment silently. Don't say anything. Don't think anything. Pause the video if you have to. Just look at it. Look at it for two whole minutes. And you'll be astounded what happens. Go do that right now.
All right. How was it? Did you enjoy the enlightenment you've gained from this? Are you now on par with my thinking and intellect? Because if so, then I congratulate you. And anyone who's watched the video to this point in time specifically, this exact moment right now, honestly, I, I don't know what to say to you. I genuinely don't know what to say. If you're watching this in the background while you do something, if you're just listening to hear my voice, if you're truly interested in what this video is about, or if you genuinely are enlightened the same way I was, I'm very interested in how such an individual like you could have made it so far. And honestly, you need to contact me if you've gotten this far in the video. Right now, you need to contact me and just let me know. Just message me anywhere saying I'm enlightened. Because honestly, I'm so proud of you. I'm so genuinely proud of you. And I will start to view you as such a higher friend than any of the other people I've known. No matter who you are, I'll view you higher. Because just, wow. Just, wow. But regardless, I need to just let you know something you may have not known. With the sun gone, the wind picking up, it's getting darker in my room. And you know what happens when it gets dark in a room? It's hard to see. And sight is one of the most important things for a human. Because our visuals are what cue our brains to act, to think, to say. Visuals mean everything to a human. Some can function without them because without visuals, it's not the end of the world. It's just, it's a big part of it. And when it's dark, your sight gets harder to see. But due to the other visual things in your world, you can be allowed an enlightened sight. And you know what a good sight is? This game. Why do you think? They picked a gray background, not black, not white, but gray, to perfectly put as the background for this game. It's obvious, because if you're in the darkness, your screen will glow and emit a dim light for you to be able to see. It's not a bright light, so you'll be blinded. It's not a dark light, so you can't see. But it's a dim light, so you are perfectly capable of viewing anything in your room while opening this beautiful, beautiful game in the background. They've done every single step to make this the best game on Earth. And the more you start to realize and put the pieces together, the more you'll start to understand how this is literally one of the best video games in humanity. This game is going to save the world. This game is going to stop all issues in the world. World hunger, race war, segregation, NFTs. It's going to stop all of the bad things. And it's going to save us. Because how do you save people going through so much? Click to 10. You click the screen to get the number up to make the thing happen. This game is just too perfect to put into physical human words. I cannot express how amazing this freaking game is. And I need to tell everyone about it.